This video explains how to determine whether a series converges or diverges using an integral. Let's start with the series the sum of 1 over n squared. Please pause the video for a moment and think about why this might converge or diverge. The sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared is closely related to the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x squared, dx. Let me show you what I mean. In this picture, I've graphed the function y equals 1 over x squared in blue. In green, I've drawn a bunch of rectangles. I've divided the x-axis into subintervals of length 1, and so each rectangle has a base of length 1 and a height given by my function's value on the right endpoint of the subinterval. So the first rectangle has a base of 1 and a height of 1, so it has an area of 1. The second rectangle has a base of 1 and a height of 1 over 2 squared, so that's 1 fourth. So the area here is 1 fourth. The next rectangle, base of 1 again and a height of 1 ninth, and so on. The area of each rectangle is just the same as its height, and its height is just given by 1 over n squared for the appropriate value of n. In other words, if I write out the first few terms of this series, it's exactly the same as the areas of my rectangles. And the sum of my series is just going to be the total green area. Now my integral can also be thought of in terms of area. This integral represents the area from 1 to infinity under my blue curve. We know that this area is finite because we know that this integral converges by the p-test, where p is 2. Now if I just look at the rectangles starting with the second rectangle on, all of those rectangles lie below the blue curve and to the right of the line x equals 1. So they'll have a smaller area and therefore the area of these rectangles from the second one on has to converge to a finite number. That is, the sum from n equals 2 to infinity of 1 over n squared converges. We're interested in the sum from 1 to infinity, but that's just the area of this single rectangle plus the area of all these rectangles, so it's just one more than this sum here. So it also converges to a finite number. To recap, the chain of logic goes like this. First, we saw that the integral represents a finite area because of the p-test. From that, we can conclude that the sum from n equals 2 to infinity of 1 over n squared represents a smaller and also finite area. And from that, we can figure out that the sum from n equals 1 to infinity has to represent a finite area. So our series converges to a finite number. Let's look at another example, the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over the square root of n. Please pause the video for a moment and think about how you might use an integral to decide if this series converges or diverges. A natural integral to consider is the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over the square root of x, dx. This integral diverges by the p-test, where p is equal to 1 half, which is less than 1. Let's look at a picture to compare areas. The blue curve here is the graph of the function y equals 1 over the square root of x, and here, once again, I've drawn green rectangles using the right endpoints to get the heights of the rectangles. So the areas of my rectangles are the same as the terms in my series. As in the previous problem, if I ignore the first rectangle, then all the rest of the rectangles have an area that's less than the area under my curve from 1 to infinity. But there's a serious problem here. The integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over the square root of x dx diverges to infinity. The area of my rectangles from the second one on might be less than my area under the blue curve, but being less than something that diverges to infinity tells us nothing. This series could converge or it could diverge. But don't give up hope. If we just tweak this picture a little bit, we'll be able to get something that we can use here. 
In this second picture, I've used left endpoints instead of right endpoints for the heights of my rectangles. Because my function y equals 1 over the square root of x is a decreasing function, using left endpoints makes my rectangles have a larger area than the area under the corresponding section of the curve. Let me label the rectangles with their areas. The areas of these rectangles correspond to the terms in my series. But now we have that the area of the green rectangles, that total area, that total area is bigger than the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x square root of x dx. Since this integral diverges and this series is larger, it must diverge also. This method of comparing a series to an integral is a very general method for showing convergence. It's known as the integral test. The integral test says that if f is a continuous, positive, and decreasing function on the interval from 1 to infinity, and our terms a sub n are equal to f evaluated at n, then if the integral from 1 to infinity of f of x dx converges, the series from 1 to infinity of a sub n converges. And if the integral from 1 to infinity of f of x dx diverges, then the series diverges. Although I won't give a formal proof of this theorem, the logic behind it is the same logic we used in the previous two examples. If the integral converges, we use the picture here using right endpoints to draw our rectangles. The area of each rectangle is the same as its height, since the rectangle has base 1. And the height of each rectangle is just f sub n. So the area of the first rectangle is just f sub 1, which is a sub 1. The area of the second rectangle is f sub 2, which is a sub 2, and so on. If we focus on the second rectangle onwards, then the combined area of those rectangles is less than the area represented by the integral. So we can say the sum from n equals 2 to infinity of a sub n is less than or equal to the integral. Since the integral converges by assumption, this series here has to converge, and therefore our original series from n equals 1 to infinity must also converge. If instead our integral diverges, then we use the other picture, and we use left endpoints for our rectangles. The areas of the rectangles are still given by a sub 1, a sub 2, and so on. But this time, the combined area of the green rectangles, that area is now greater than or equal to the integral of our function. Since this integral diverges, the larger area must diverge as well. That's the idea behind the integral test. And to apply it, we just need to be able to integrate the function that corresponds to our terms and check that that function is continuous, positive, and decreasing. Actually, it's enough to check that the function is eventually continuous, positive, and decreasing. By eventually, I mean that it has these properties on some interval from r to infinity for some number r. This is good enough because then I can always draw these same pictures just starting with r instead of 1 in my picture and get that the integral converges if and only if the series starting at r converges by the same arguments we used before. But the series starting at r converges if and only if the series starting at 1 converges. Since adding on finitely many extra terms to my series doesn't affect whether it converges or not. And the integral from r to infinity converges if and only if the integral from 1 to infinity converges. Because similarly, adding on a finite little piece of area from 1 to r doesn't change the convergent status of the integral. So by this chain of logic, it's OK if our function starts out increasing for a while, as long as it's eventually positive, continuous, and decreasing. Here's an example of the integral test in action. We want to know if the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of ln n over n converges or diverges. So let's look instead at the integral 
from 1 to infinity of ln of x over x. This is a continuous function because it's the quotient of two continuous functions and we're starting at an x value of 1 so we don't have to worry about the denominator being 0. It's also a positive function since we know that ln of x is greater than 0 for x bigger than 1 and therefore this quotient is greater than 0 also. Finally, let's check if our function is decreasing. One way to do that is to look at the derivative. If f of x is ln x over x, then f prime of x by the quotient rule is x times 1 over x minus ln x times 1 over x squared. This simplifies to 1 minus ln x over x squared, which is negative when 1 minus ln x is less than 0, that is, 1 is less than ln x, that is, e is less than x. So the function has a negative derivative and is decreasing whenever x is bigger than e, so it's eventually decreasing. The three conditions are met, so we can apply the integral test. Next, we need to figure out if this integral converges or diverges. This is an improper integral, so by definition, it's the limit, as t goes to infinity, of the integral from 1 to t of ln x over x. We can use u substitution to evaluate it, where u is equal to ln x du is equal to 1 over x dx, and when x is equal to 1, u is equal to ln of 1, that's 0, when x is equal to t, u is equal to ln of t. Substituting in, we get the integral from 0 to ln t of u du. This integrates to u squared over 2 evaluated between ln t and 0. Substituting in our bounds of integration, we get the limit as t goes to infinity of ln t squared over 2 minus 0. Now as t goes to infinity, ln of t also goes to infinity. So ln t squared over 2 goes to infinity. Therefore, the integral diverges. And so by the integral test, the series also diverges. In this video, we saw that a series converges if and only if the corresponding integral converges, provided that the corresponding function is eventually continuous, positive, and decreasing.